Hi, this is Dean Miller back with another video of the significance of the life of Jesus. This is in Matthew 9, verses 27 through 34. This is in the NLT Bible. This is where Jesus heals the blind and a mute. So, after Jesus left the girl's home, the two blind men followed along behind him, shouting, Son of David, have mercy on us. They went right into the house where he was staying, and Jesus asked them, Do you believe that I can make you see? Yes, Lord, they told him, we do. Then he touched their eyes and said, Because of your faith, it will happen. Then their eyes were opened and they could see. Jesus sternly warned them, Do not tell anyone about this. But instead, they went out and spread his fame all over the region. When they left, a demon-possessed man who couldn't speak was brought to Jesus. So Jesus cast out the demon. And the man began to speak. The crowds were amazed. Nothing like this has ever happened in Israel, they exclaimed. But the Pharisee said he can cast out demons because he's empowered by the prince of demons. So in verse 27, it says, After Jesus left the girl's home, that was Jairus' daughter, the one he brought back from the dead, two blind men followed along him, shouting, Son of David, have mercy on us. So they were following Jesus after he left that house, yelling over and over, Son of David, Son of David, have mercy on us, have mercy on us. This is the first time in the book of Matthew that he was Jesus was referenced to the son of David and Matthew was a stickler because he was writing to the Jews that about lineage and in prophets prophecy so this was to show that Jesus was from the the line of David and they were the first ones to cry out that the Messiah is here you know the blind seen Jesus the people who see couldn't see him but the blind actually caught out Jesus and a couple of the stories before where Jesus seen a legion, a demonic man that got cast into the herd of pigs, there was a demon that actually cried out who Jesus really was. So here we see evil know who Jesus is and blind people know who Jesus is, but the people who actually follow him daily still haven't understood yet. In Isaiah twenty nine eighteen it says, In that day the deaf will hear words read from a book, read from a book, and the blind will see through the gloom and darkness. Isaiah 35, 5 says, And when he comes, he will open the eyes of the blind and unplug the ears of the deaf. So this is prophecy showing that Jesus was going to be here to actually have the people, mute people talk, have the blind people see again, and the deaf people hear again. Jesus was the only one that healed the blind in the scriptures. In the Old Testament, he never did it, but all through the New, New Testament, that was one of the main things he did was actually help people see. In after he left, the only person that actually got healed from blindness was Paul. And Paul was actually a Pharisee, and he went around killing Christians. And on the road to Damascus, God actually made him blind so he could see spiritually. So that's how he changed Paul, and Paul actually wrote most of the New Testament. So he, he became a very devout Christian when he actually got that spiritual blindness removed. And Jesus came, like I said, Jesus came... Only to restore, not only to restore physical blindness, but spiritual blindness. And Satan, his job is to blind the minds of people. So Jesus came to do the opposite. And these two, two guys here, you see in the next verse, it says, Then they went right into the house where they were staying, and asked Jesus, and Jesus asked him, Do you believe I can make you see? These guys were being persistent. They kept following Jesus and shouting to him and screaming to him and crying. You know, they wanted to be healed, and they knew who he was because the next sentence it says, Yes, Lord, they told him, we do. So they knew he was the Lord. He knew that he was the Messiah. And Jesus reacted to that. He said, Then he touched their eyes and said, Because of your faith, it will happen. Then their eyes were opened, and they could see. Jesus sternly warned them, Do not tell anyone about this. So Jesus reacted to them by touching their eyes gently, and he healed them. Because of their faith. He knew that they were blind and they didn't see any miracle that he ever did. And they still believed in him. But Jesus then told them, why did he, told them not to go tell anybody. Why do you think he did this? It's because Jesus wasn't ready for everybody to know who he was yet. He still had a lot of teaching left to do. And he wanted to spend more time with the disciples and get them spiritually right too. Plus he had a lot more people to do miracles in front of and and sh show his awesome power. So these actually, these people actually disobeyed Jesus and went around and told everybody, which is ironic because everybody today, Jesus asks to spread his word to everybody, and nobody does. So these people went around and told everybody about Jesus, 
that we're told not to, and we are told to do it, and we don't spread the word of Jesus. It's kind of ironic. Then in verses uh, 32 through 34, when they came, when they left, a demon-possessed man who couldn't speak was brought to Jesus. So these people, it doesn't say who he was or how he got there, but they brought him to Jesus because he couldn't speak and he was had a demon in him. So Jesus cast out the demon and the man began to speak. And the crowds were amazed. Nothing like this has ever happened in Israel, they exclaimed. In reading through the all the scriptures, you know, Jesus never touched a demon-possessed person. He touched leprosy, he touched bleeding women, he touched unclean people, and all that to heal them. But a demon-possessed person, he never touched. He actually cast them away from a distance. So that kind of tells us that if we know somebody who may be demon-possessed, try to stay away from them and pray for them in the name of Jesus, away from them. Uh, the crowds were amazed by what happened here. But crowds can be all over the place too. And in the, in the Bible, the crowds usually weren't good. Crowds can be unpredictable in a way that they were trying to seek Jesus. They kept, they were in the way. They kept When people were trying to get to Jesus, they were always in the way. People had to fight through the crowds to see him. And they feed off each other in bad ways too. You know, once one person in the crowd gets going, it's like a herd complex. Everybody follows. You know, the crowd went against Jesus and had him crucified. So crowds can be very dangerous at and in the Bible, they usually are not good people. Then you get the old Pharisees, you know, they're better than now, calling out Jesus, saying that he cast out demons because he's empowered by the prince of demons. So here you see a, a, another ironic twist is you got people who can't see who know who Jesus are is, and then you got people who can see that don't know who he is, like these Pharisees. All the miracles that Jesus did, he he healed a bleeding woman, he brought a person back to life, um, he hired, he healed the leprosy. And several, all through chapter 9, he did nothing but miracle after miracle, and they still didn't believe. They still wanted to say that he was here from Satan. So they were just jealous because they couldn't do what he could do, and they thought they were better than he was, and he came to make, and he was making them look bad because he knew all the scriptures better than they did. Because he is the word. He was God, so he wrote the word. I mean, he knows it better than they do, and they couldn't understand why. They kept trying to trick him, and they couldn't catch him. And he made them look like fools in front of everybody. So in conclusion, the Pharisees and the crowd stand where most people stand today. Against what is good. They're, they stand against God. Most crowds stand against God. And it's sad to say that, but we need to stay away from crowds. We need to hang around good people. We need to hang around crowds and other believers and stay away from bad people because they're just going to drag us down. I'm not saying that we can't try to help them, but generally if we just pray for them and let God and the Holy Spirit take care of what he needs to do. We just need to let them know that God loves them no matter who they are and they can always come back to him. And it didn't matter how many miracles Jesus performed, the crowds and the Pharisees still wouldn't believe. Just like today, no matter what you say about the Bible or what people see, they still ain't going to believe. Some people just don't want to believe. They don't want to think that God's out there. And it's crazy to think that because all the things that we read in this Bible, and if if you read over it, that Holy Spirit catches you and you know that it isn't fake. This Bible can't be made up. And it's crazy to think that the blind can see who Jesus was, but the people who can see didn't know who he was. So, you know, blind people knew who Jesus was, and the demons knew who he was, but people on that were walking around on earth, even the Pharisees who were supposed to be God's people, didn't know who Jesus was. It's, it's kind of ironic and crazy. And we all need to walk by faith and not by sight. You know, we we know the wind's there because we can feel it. But we can't see the wind, so is it not real? You know, it's just like Jesus. I can feel Jesus in my life if I if I look for him. Just because I can't see him doesn't mean he isn't real. Spiritual blindness is worse than physical blindness. Why Jesus teaches in parables is because the believers who want to know more about Jesus in the word will dig deeper to understand what it says and what it means. So like the four soils parable, I mean... Reading over it, you don't know what it means, but if you start digging into it, it, it if you want to understand it, you'll actually dig into it more, and, and Jesus knows how to 
get your attention because he's God. He knows what, what it takes to get people's attention, the believers. And that's why he taught in parables. We need to believe that what Jesus can do. We need to believe and obey his commands. The blind men disobeyed, but we need to do exactly what they did and spread the word of Jesus. You know, just because they disobeyed doesn't mean they sinned. You know, Jesus didn't want his word to get out, but they were so excited and joyful what he did for them. They just went around because there was no way that they could hide that they were, weren't blind anymore. They couldn't pretend that they weren't blind. And they were so proud of, you know, finding the Messiah and their persistence of getting to him. And they knew what he did and he fixed their life forever. And that's what we need to do. We need to have that persistent faith to find Jesus so he can fix our life forever. And he'll put that joy in your heart that nothing in this world can give us. Nothing can give us that joy, what Jesus says. When you're looking for that emptiness that you have in your heart and in your soul, buying these worldly things and the alcoholism and pornography and all these other things that you, you think is going to satisfy your needs isn't going to do anything for you. It's actually going to make things worse. And we also need to marvel over Jesus' works. You know, Jesus is still alive today. Um, my daughter's husband's brother actually got shot Saturday. And he was fighting for his life. They had a flight carry him to the hospital. And he's in, he was in pretty bad shape. And everybody that I know said they would pray for him. So everybody went down and they started praying. And, you know, they got the word from the doctor that night. And they did an emergency surgery on him. And said it didn't look good. That, you know, his chances of survival were pretty low. But everybody prayed. And the next day, everything was... I mean, he still got a long road to heaven. But he actually got to speak to his mom again. He got to speak to his father, his brothers. You know, and it's just a blessing that God made him survive through that. So don't think that prayer today doesn't help because it it will help. And if and you're in that bad storm like he was, he was in a storm for his life. And he said in that moment when he was getting shot at, he just closed his eyes and was praying to God hard. He was praying that God got him through it, and he did. So God made a miracle happen, and he can still do that today. You know, it's going to be in his time and again and in his will, but it does happen. You know, and, and hopefully that young man will go to the streets and tell everybody what God did for him. You know, God saved his life. He got to speak to his mother again, his father. You know, and all of us are glad that he's still here because he's a good young boy. He just got in a bad situation. You know, and it doesn't take a second to put ourselves in a bad situation. So I just want to do a praise to God. Thank you for what you did for that young man and... I know his family is very thankful for your mercy, God. Amen. So if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel on the YouTube channel, on Facebook. Please like it, comment in the comment section. I like to see your comments. Plus other people see that and it helps inspire them. Please share these videos. I mean, that's the only way we can get the word out is by sharing them. And uh, let's go up today, this week and today and... Let's everyone talk about God. Share the word. Share what happened in our lives, our testimonies, and what he's done for us in our lives. And it'll make a big difference in the world because there's somebody out there that needs to hear that God loves them. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Amen.